Okay, welcome to another video. So something a little bit different today. Instead of checking out a new distribution release and doing a little review or run through, we're instead going to see how I've set up the daily driver on my laptop, which has gone through quite a few changes since the last time we did a video like this. I think the last time we was daily driving Arch on this laptop with KDE Plasma as a desktop environment. However, we're now using GNOME and a different distribution, which we'll go into in just a moment. So I've been using my laptop a lot more as of late because we're currently sorting out a new place, but more on that in future videos. So I've not really been at my desk too much. Now the laptop itself is fairly old by today's standards, but I don't really do too much with it apart from sort of keep up with emails and the very light edit here and there. So we've got a 16 gig RAM and we are using an Intel Core i5 and we have 1.3 terabytes of SSD storage. Now, as you can see under the OS, we're currently using the development branch of the upcoming Ubuntu Impish injury release. We're quite some way away from the final release, so I don't recommend you all go and use that as your daily driver. But what I often do ahead of a big Ubuntu release is install it onto a couple of different sort of machines, play around with it for a few days ahead of the final release, which is when we start doing our sort of series of videos. But this version's kind of stuck with me and I've really quite been enjoying it. So I've set it all up now as a daily driver. And when the final release comes, we'll either just update to the final release or if we need to, we'll do a quick install, fresh install, which the way I partition my disks will make that a lot easier anyway. So we have got GNOME version 40.2.0 and the windowing system is Wayland, which matters to me more than it ever has because I really am a massive fan of these native touchpad gestures on GNOME 40 with the one-to-one -one tracking. I found myself just sort of navigating through my desktop a lot more with the touchpad these days on the laptop as opposed to using the keyboard shortcuts and they are native to the Wayland windowing system. You can of course use different extensions etc to get it to work on X11 but out of the box it works absolutely beautifully on Wayland when you're using GNOME 40. Now as far as the kernel I've gone ahead and just installed the Licorix kernel which I quite like and it's been working absolutely fine during my time with it. Now we're going to go into sort of the disk setup because there's a few little sort of quirks and ways that I've set it up that might differ from a lot of other people. So if we open up disks, GNOME disks, we can see we have the one main drive, which is the Sabrent NVMe, which is very nice sort of read and write speeds, which is what most of everything lives on. And then as you can see, we've got a few different partitions here. So we have the main root partition using ButterFS. Probably could have messed around with the size of it, but for now that'll do just fine. And then we have the bulk of our storage for the home partition, which is using ext4 as a file system. And then we have a 2GB swap partition. Now, the reason I'm using ButterFS is because I'm someone who quite often will experiment with this sort of distribution and desktop. And a lot of the times, it's nice to have a very quick and easy reset button to get back to where you was prior to sort of installing anything that you might not no longer need, which is what time shift with ButterFS does for me. So with snapshots on ButterFS, we can sort of, you know, install something that could potentially mess things up a bit. And we kind of want the peace of mind to be able to just go back to it before we did that with just a couple of clicks, which is what Time Shift with ButterFS allows me to do. That's why I use ButterFS and I'm a massive fan of Time Shift as just a very simple GUI for quickly managing your snapshots. Now, if we go back into our disks, we can see that we have another disk, which is set up in a quite weird way as well. So you can see we have one very small partition here of 32 GB and then we have a completely free space here with nothing sort of no file systems or anything like that. This is kind of just spare for when I'm doing a distro review. We usually do it on the desktop but every now and then there'll be something laptop specific like sort of power management or a touchpad gesture that we want to check out. So I'll keep this little drive here completely free for when we need to do that but instead we have a very small partition here which is where a few sort of applications reside now what i mean by that is if we go into our file manager now so let's just type in files open up nautilus now if we go into our home folder you can see that we have a folder here called applications but it's got a little sort of shortcut symbol there because that is actually a sim link so the actual destination and path of that folder resides on a different drive and we've just sim linked them together using ln S. I'll show you how that works in just a moment. So inside applications, we just have a few app images that I use on a daily basis at the moment. Quite sort of spare. We're going to get quite a few more there. We're still sort of setting this up. 
I do quite like to rely on app images for this kind of setup because it's more portable than any of the other universal packaging formats like Snap or Flatpak. So with that being on a separate drive on the SSD here on its own partition, we have mounted that at MNT slash SSD so we can get to it here. And here is the actual folder of those app images. So that's the actual path of them. And the um, folder in our home folder for applications is the sort of soft link. What this allows me to do, so I've also, of course, created dot desktop icons for all of them. So you can search for them in your application launcher. So for example, Caden Live, there is Caden Live with the correct icon theming. And then we can go ahead and open that without any issues. Now there is one application I need to sort out the uh, icon for. I haven't found it properly, which is Etcher, but I'm not too worried about that at the moment. Anyway, so let's just close that back off and then get back over here. So with that being symlinked, I can install a different distribution and just sort of mount this drive, copy over the .desktop icons that I've created for them, and then I'm ready to go with all of my app images in the same place on a different distribution, saving me time of re-downloading things, making them executable, making the .desktop icons, because I don't use anything like AppImageD or AppImageLauncher. What I tend to do is just create the .desktop icons myself, because then I find I can integrate them into my system the way I like to. So if we go into home, .local and share applications, here is where we can see the .desktop files that I've created for those app images. Now for the symlink, super simple stuff. So we've just created a test folder in the SSD and we've just created another folder inside that. Now say we wanted to shift like a soft link or a symlink like the applications folder here to show up in our home folder. All we'd need to do is go for the actual path. So it's MNT slash SSD and then we've called it test. So what we're going to do is just copy that over and now do the actual directory for our home folder. Super simple stuff. And then as you can see, we have that folder here. It's not created a new folder or new files. It's just sim link them. So link them across like a shortcut and then you can access them regardless of what drive they're on. So it's super sort of simple stuff, but makes using multiple sort of drives across different things a whole lot easier. At least for me, it's a bit of a quirky way of doing things with the app images, but I found it works out very well. Now I think what we'll do is spend a little bit of time talking about my actual desktop setup because it's quite different to the standard sort of stock gnome that you are going to get on Ubuntu. So we're currently ripping off the uh, Mac OS Monterey wallpaper. I really do like this wallpaper with the sort of transparent panel at the top. Now if we go into our application overview, as you can see of course we all know now that Gnome 40 is using the new sort of overview of the horizontal workspaces which is actually what's got me back into enjoying GNOME. So before that, with the previous versions like 3.38, etc., I don't quite like the sort of vertical workspaces. It just kind of feels a little bit off to me. And with the new sort of touchpad gestures, it just makes really, I really do enjoy navigating around my desktop. Now it's using GNOME 40. Like I say, I wasn't a huge fan of GNOME 40 for quite a long time, but with this new release, I'm definitely a huge fan of the way GNOME 40 is currently working for me anyway. Now the stock sort of a GNOME 40 on Ubuntu, you will of course have your Ubuntu dock on the left hand side. Now I've removed that because it doesn't fit for me with the overall sort of workflow and just aesthetic of GNOME 40. Because of course we now have a dash nicely placed on the bottom here, which gives you all of this space here for your applications and then your workspaces just above that. Or of course when you're just in the workspace switching, you then have your dasher here as well. Now, when you've got a long sort of dock or panel on the left, it kind of just cramps things up a bit and doesn't look quite right. So if we go into extensions, and then as you can see here, we've got a few of our own, which we'll go to in just a moment. But if we go ahead and enable the Ubuntu dock, as you don't worry about the difference in theming at the moment, that's just because I'm using an extension called Blur My Shell for the sort of overview share, sort of blur and the top panel and all of that good stuff. As you can see, when you're in the overview, it kind of just sort of makes things not look quite right and just feels a little bit more cramped as opposed to when you just have your dash on the bottom, which is why I've gone ahead and just decided not to use any dash whatsoever or any dock. And the way I've got this set up, I don't really need one, so I'm not missing that too much anyway, so we can go ahead and just completely disable that. Now, fortunately, with our favorited applications, of course, let's say we wanted to open up files we could always just search for it, but a quicker way is seeing that it's number two in the application list. So if we just go super and two, that will then open up the files for us. And it will be the same sort of story for any of these applications 
in the current order that they are in and we'll go through some of my default applications in just a moment so that's why i'm not currently using the ubuntu dock but what i am using is a few different extensions but nothing too crazy so we've got blur my shell like i said that's giving us a nice sort of transparent blur effect that we see in our overview as well as our nice wallpaper making everything have a nice uniformed look and you can go into the settings and sort of manually tweak it so maybe you don't want your dash to be transparent but you want your panel to be and you can also set the dash opacity and all of that good stuff very useful little extension we didn't have espresso so not nothing too much here if you've used caffeine before it's the same kind of thing it's just a fork of caffeine which is working a bit better than caffeine with the more recent versions of gnome since it entered gnome 40 and that will just sort of whenever i click that it will sort of stop any screen savers or lock screens happening when i'm focusing on something but not interacting with the sort of touchpad or mouse or keyboard too much we then have impatience which is an extension i've spoke a lot about in other distro videos it just makes for me using the actual gnome dash and just overall moving around gnome a whole lot faster say if i wanted to go into applications like so you can see we're not really waiting the animation is nice and short and we're getting straight to it without waiting so if we disable that for now you can see that it's going to be a bit slower and take it a little bit longer to get to sort of what you're wanting to do and little things like that just make it feel a little bit of a more slow experience when using the GNOME desktop. So I find impatience makes it just a whole lot more snappy to move around and I'm less sort of waiting for animations to end and I'm good to go. And I haven't really messed around with the speed scaling. So we're currently just in between 0 0.5 and 1. But you can, of course, sort of manually set that up to whatever speed you prefer. So very cool extension just makes using GNOME feel a whole lot snappier. And then we have the pop shell which we had to install from the sort of the github but other than that i'm sure we've all used pop shell before very simple stuff so we can have all of our tiling windows on sort of a full-fledged dis desktop distribution like gnome or a desktop environment and i have changed some of the keyboard shortcuts so let's open up a few so we've now got two terminal windows open and the terminal emulator i'm actually using is terminator because with gnome terminal it doesn't tile very nicely with other applications i've found during my time with it now say i've got an application open on the left like maybe gimp and i've got my file manager on the right and i've just got it set up like that so i can just quickly drag and drop some files over into gimp or caden live but then i want to keep my file manager open but then i want to have the full screen dedicated to gimp all i can do is just move that across and then go back and then i've got all of it back to where i want quickly drag and drop some more files over move it back forward and then I can have the full screen application like so. Now, of course, there's a whole load of different sort of shortcuts and things that you can do with Pop Shell. I'm sure you've all used it before, but I found this is sort of a good in-between for me, sort of having just a tiling window manager and then also having the sort of creature comforts that a full desktop environment like GNOME gives you. Now, that's kind of basically it as far as the desktop setup goes. Like I say, I don't need too much crazy stuff. Pop shell, and blur, uh, pop shell and blur my shell has kind of covered all bases for me and as i say we've also removed the ubuntu dock and everything is just feeling nice and fluid as you can see we can just move about without any issues whatsoever now as far as applications we'll spend the last couple of minutes talking about what i use at least just on this laptop now i don't need a lot on this laptop but the things that i do need are things like a web browser so of course we're using a firefox I do some very light edits on this laptop every now and then. So we've got the app image of Caden Live. And then we have LibreOffice, which is also an app image. And what's cool about Caden Live and LibreOffice, they both actually ship official app images for you to download as well as the other formats. And the reason why I do quite like app images, like I say, very portable. So it can all be shared across different desktops and it just works very nicely for the sort of use case that I have for it. And that's the fresh package, so the most up-to-date one. And all I tend to really use these days is a writer. And that's all set up with the dictionary support all included in the app image working absolutely beautifully. So no worries there. Now, other applications, we have GIMP. So that's a native application, a dev package. And the actual email client that I use the most on GNOME is Evolution. Now, I do like Thunderbird, but I really do like the sort of overall layout of Evolution and the way it works with your different sort of contacts, calendar tasks and memos. Now I'll blur out what I need to, but as you can see in my to-do list and my tasks, 
we can see we've got a few tasks here and that's all in the one window and we could also go to my notes calendar and it all just syncs up perfectly and i really do like the way evolution integrates with sort of online accounts and the rest of the known desktop so i do find that my favorite desktop email client with thunderbird being a, a close second if you like now what else have we got okay so last but not least we have a uh, virtual box now i don't tend to use too many virtual machines on this laptop it's all mainly done on the desktop so all i really need on the laptop is something small and easy to use like VirtualBox, if I quickly want to jump in and check something out, if I need to spin up a virtual machine for whatever reason, VirtualBox kind of keeps me covered and does the job just fine. On my desktop, we use a sort of combination of different things for like KVM, like Virt Manager. We also do use VirtualBox, but for the most part, on the laptop, VirtualBox works just fine. And to be honest, that's mainly all of the applications that I do actually need on this laptop i'm sure throughout sort of time we'll be adding to it there's a few things i'll need to manage sort of my website so we might need filezilla but at the moment that's all we're going to currently use and i've really been enjoying it so i've been using this for the past sort of four or five days as my sort of daily driver when i'm out and about and it's been brilliant i've had absolutely no complaints with it whatsoever um, of course we're on the laptop so we do have things like bluetooth but I don't tend to really use Bluetooth too much on this laptop. So as you can see there, it says off and it also doesn't give us the option to turn it back on. So what I've done, I've just completely disabled it. So if we go system CTL, enable Bluetooth, and then we'll do the now flag. We can now quickly enable Bluetooth if we do want to use Bluetooth. And then as you can see there, Bluetooth is on. Now we can just go back and disable it. Save us a bit of battery. And like I say, you can, of course, just flick the switch to disable it. And not have to do all of this but i find a lot of the time regardless of what distribution i'm on sometimes bluetooth just decides it wants to be on anyway and on a fresh boot i often will find it just on for no particular reason and i'm always sort of getting annoyed at just sort of having to go back in here and turn it off so as i don't really use it i've just completely disabled it haven't uninstalled it so if there's ever a time when i need to use bluetooth for some headphones or something like that we can just quickly go ahead and enable it like that and I think for the most part, that is the sort of updated refresh look at the daily driver on the laptop now. Like I say, uh, I'm really enjoying it. So Ubuntu, the sort of newer release has got quite some ways to go yet. So we'll probably have to do a fresh install, but because we've got a separate home partition, we won't lose any files or anything like that. And the way we set up our app images and the way we'll continue to set things up like that, will be pretty much good to go to do a sort of wipe and clean install every single time that we need to but we might be lucky and just update to the sort of stable image and it'll be just fine so that's my sort of refresh look thank you for watching if you've enjoyed this video please subscribe and if you've really enjoyed it consider supporting me on patreon join the discord there's a link in the description below and i'll see you on the next one Bye bye